Good afternoon. My name is Domenico. I'm a 3D printing specialist at Ember Technologies. Um, we're kind of a mirror company to objects. We're also a 3D systems authorized reseller, and we also do uh, parts printing on demand. Um, we concentrate on both the additive and the subtractive technologies. Um, as many of you know, and all the hype that's been created in the media, there's a lot of growth in the 3D printing industry. You know, people are talking $5 billion plus by 2017. Um, there's more and more makers coming out, more and more technologies with even more materials that are available for printing. I mean, we're going from Kevlar to sugar to titanium. Um, just a quick slide on Amber. I'm not going to spend too much time on that, but we do cover a lot of the... Um, industry verticals in, uh, in Canada. All right, now, this is the slide I wanted to talk about. Um, other than just the architectural building side of things, um, the 3D printing comes to its own when you've got things like water parks, where uh, they are extremely difficult to do by hand. They're labor intensive, time consuming. Um, you can print them in parts. I think you could actually see where the brake lines are on the right of the picture there. Uh, typical build takes less than 10 hours, and you've got an accurate scaled model that you get, when you put together, you'll know will fit fairly easily. Um, I'm not going to dwell too much on that, uh, but I did want to talk on the different technologies that are available at the moment. We've got the color jet printing. These are the ones that you'll see that model on the top of the desk there that I brought in as an example. They're full color, millions of colors. We can get high accuracy. They are powder based. All right. We then go with the multi-jet printing with varying material properties. These deliver extremely accurate parts. A lot smaller. The build sizes aren't as big. Uh, we've got S SLA, stereolithography printers, which cure resin with uh, lasers. Also very accurate, very quick. We have SLS, creating functional parts in nylon. This is where you have a powder material and a laser melts it together. <coughs> And of course, we have the full metal printing where we can print aluminium, titanium, etc. But the, the interesting part about metal printers, and this you might find interesting, is they've been used more and more now for aircraft manufacturing because they are able to achieve close to 100% density, which means there's less risk of having air entrapment inside a metal part. So, which is quite important for engineers. I know most of you are from the architectural side. Um, advantages to having your own 3D printer and your 3D printing, uh, confidentiality. All your designs are kept in-house. Um, I've worked in the Middle East for many years, and architects competing for the same job would send their designs to model builders, and you'd have three guys sending it to the same model builder. And whoever had the end with the model builder would get the ideas of the other architects and incorporate their ideas into their designs. I'm not sure if you've come across that, but I've actually seen that happen. So by having your own 3D printer, all your designs are confidential until you're ready to release them. Uh, massing models are created quickly. You can do multiple what-if scenarios within a day uh, because you're not going to put too much detail on them. Production times, fairly quick. You can get a model in under a day. Uh, Models are accurate. There's no loss of design intent. Um, usually when they're built by hand, you, know, you can't get the parts 100%. Materials are limited. Workability is limited. With a printer, you get the detail. I mean, you can go come up later on and have a look. You can count the bricks on the side of that model there. And the colors are, oh, the one slide's missing. The colors are accurate. All right, uh, whatever JPEG mapping you use on the model, it will be printed out like it's on an inkjet printer. It's basically the same thing. Um, this is courtesy of ProSlide. You can see this is an amusement park. Um, do you agree with me? This is very difficult to reproduce by hand. I think the picture speaks for itself. Yeah, it's easy to print either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't go into that one now. Um, another great advantage of 3D printers are the multi-material printers, where engineers, architects, can now specify the hardness of the material for each part. And in the same build, you can go from rubber to hard plastic. So if you're going to do things like bridges or anything that's got to have a little bit of uh, motion in it, 
you, know, you can now replicate it with a technology in a scaled model. Um, I think you can just look there at the Formula One car, the, the tires are pure rubber, the body is hard plastic, and then you can do the variable wings with uh, material in between. Um, something that Steve touched on earlier, you really need to be aware, it's not the same as taking a model from Max or Maya and saying print. You know, those you need tricks to get the rendering times down. It's the same with uh, 3D printing. You need to check that your solids are watertight. You're not printing unnecessary um, artifacts, things like screws and door handles. You know, if you're not going to see it, if it's not important, don't put it in the model. So you would have to ser effectively build a third model. You know, you would have your BIM model, you would then have your virtual presentation model, but your physical model would have to be a third file. Um, same thing with scaling, you can't just take a model that you've done and rev it, scale it down to fit into your print bed. Um, parts become too thin, they'll crumble, they fall apart, uh, difficult to handle, difficult to cure. Uh, and that's my bit. Uh, I'd just like to add a few things that I didn't have there on the slide is a couple of the advantages also with the 3D printing is if you've got remote sites like oil and gas plants or inaccessible areas, um, with the technology available today, you can put out some of these huge scanners, place them around, scan the whole area or scan a plant or scan a building, get it replicated, bring it to a design team back here at the head office. Everybody can see what's going on on the model. Everybody's got an understanding of proportions, where the problems are. Um, Clash detection is another good one. You know, maybe you don't see it with the software, you don't get it from their reports, you'd see it in the printer. Um, that's it, that's all I've got to say for today. Thank you very much.